Hello there and welcome back. This is going to be a series about a tool I have recently discovered, which is called Velociraptor. So this Velociraptor, as far as I know, is written in Go. And basically what we would like to do is to discover uh, the functionalities throughout this series. And sh I would like to show you how you can set up and use this tool. And basically it allows you to collect information about your clients and even monitor them. And uh, for example, if you want to monitor on Windows clients, the execution of script blocks, which are related to an event, event ID, which is created in your Windows event entries or event logs, it is going to allow you to do that and you can also respond to specific uh, events in your infrastructure environment. So first what we would like to do is to set up this uh, master server so to speak on a Windows machine. As you can see this is a 2019A machine and basically it has not that much of uh, resources so it's like hold on 4 gigs of memory and 2 processors so it's, it's not that problematic so now what we need to do is to download first the MSI package and in order to download this we need to go to the releases and here we select the one appropriate for our platform so we could use the AMD64 MSI package. And after the download is complete, what we can do now is to go to the downloads folder and just simply install it. Yeah, Windows will try to prevent this from happening, but once the installer is complete, what we will see here is that under program files, we will have the Velociraptor folder. Now let's open a command prompt with administrator privileges and navigate there. And let me make this a little bit bigger for you. So like this. Yeah, it is visible now. <laughs> so now what we need to do is to generate a configuration. So in order to generate the configuration, what we need to first uh, decide is whether we would like to have this uh, server created as a standalone server or in the cloud. If you have the standalone server, that's uh, useful when you have an environment, when you have uh, let's say network visibility from your clients to your master server and you do not have to open up firewall ports or change the routing if you deploy it in the cloud you need to also consider like trying to open up the appropriate ports which are necessary so for the port 8000 it is used for client and server communications the 8089 is for access for the graphical user interface, which we will check out. And it is the 8001 is required for API access. Great. Now what we need to do is to issue this command. So Velociraptor config generate dash I. Let's see what happens. Config generate dash I. And we would like to generate a configuration for a Windows machine. We would like to use Firebase Data Store, but we could use MySQL based data store. So MySQL is for not like testing out this idea, but for a production ready environment when you want to secure further your deployment. So the path can be the Windows stamp folder and we would like to use the self-signed certificate but you have the option to use Let's Encrypt which is another pretty useful feature or we could use the Google's Open Out SSO. Now we would like to leave everything on the default but if you have different requirements you of course can modify this one. We would like to use the local host and we would like to use the default GUI port. We are not using any Google domains. D DNS and the username or email address to authorize is like not really our priority at the moment. We skip it and where should we write it? 
Oh, we can write it here and here. Now, if we should type command with the server.config.yaml, we will see what the configuration for our server is. And basically it says that our front end is listening to a local host port 8000 and the certificate authority and so on. So basically it's, it's just a YAML description as to what uh, the configuration for, for the server is. Now, since we have this part done, what we need to do is to add a user and we can do it with this command. So for example, if we wanted to add a user the following way, so let me make this a bit smaller so we can see the command. So velociraptor dash dash config server config yaml user add. How do we call this user? Let's call it Ansible. And we would like to have the role as administrator. And we need to enter the password, which will be Ansible as well. And what we can do now is to run our server. So how do we run it? What we can do now is to issue the following command. So velociraptor config uh, server.yaml and we would like to run it in server mode with the dash V. So the V means verbose and what? Come on. Great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's called front end. I tend to mix this up. But now if we go to the HTTPS, localhost 8889 we should get this your connection is not private of course it is not because we are using the self-signed certificate and we will use the Ansible Ansible combination to get to our home page and technically this is it so here we can see the home page which is about basically the load of the server currently connected clients and the users and so on. So now we have the hunt manager. So hunt manager allows you to hunt for specific, let's say, events that happen on your clients. And um, you can also say that you would like to view specific artifacts and you could see the server events as well. And you could check the server artifacts and you also have the option for these notebooks. So we could name this notebook test, test description, add notebook. And basically this is just going to be a notebook and which you can edit and use to take notes for yourself. And um, this is not all that we can and should do. Currently, we have no clients uh, connected to the server. So let's rectify that. Let's navigate to the Velociraptor and let's go and issue the Velociraptor exe and the config is going to be client config YAML and it is going to work in client mode with the dash V. And the first time this client is connected, it is going to enroll to the specific server based on the client config file. So you could use that client config with very little modification to enroll your client to your existing uh, master server, so to speak. And now what you see is that we have successfully connected to the local host and we have one client installed or initialized. And now if you go back to the home page, come on. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, so basically it, it was stuck because I was brave enough to select something in here in the command prompt and 
if you click here, select something and go back to the web page, it is going to stay frozen. So I have no idea why this is happening, but now we can say that we would like to select the host 2019A. And this has a client ID, host name, OS version, and so on. And uh, we could inter interrogate this host. We could check the collected information. And by default, some basic information is collected about clients. So now what we can and should do is to try and figure out what's inside this information. So if you click on the prepare to download, and download the zip file, what you will see that we have this clients folder and the artifacts and the generic client info. And basically this holds some kind of information about our system. So now if you check it, you will see that this is very little information that was collected. But in the next video, we will see how we can connect a Linux client. So stay tuned for more. See you in the next